not being ready for your time. But thank you very much for coming. We're, as you would expect, in the home stretch with reference to preparations for this year's edition of the International Energy Conference and Expo Guyana. And before I introduce Kurt and ask him to deliver the updates, I just wanted to mention um, a couple of housekeeping matters, <clears throat> one of which I know you're not going to like, but life is like that sometimes. So essentially, we're going to be using this as the media center again this year, and we're going to try to use this as a base for all media and to provide you with all of the support that you need to do your jobs and to deliver uh, the best coverage possible. We're going to have a set of schedules available to you so that every day here, we're going to let you know what other events are happening. There are a number of events going to be happening on the sidelines. There are a number of agreements we expect to be signed between companies who are participating in the, in the conference. And we're going to be doing all of those here. We intend to do a better job of letting you know about these. So we're going to have a kind of little bulletin and a group and a whatever. And so you should have, on a daily basis, all of the additional information as to what's taking place here. The one thing we can't do, and I just want to put this on the table very early, the one thing we cannot do is get the media in the room at the opening ceremony tomorrow, like happened last year. There just is no physical space to be able to do that. And if I were still a reporter, I'd be unhappy. If I were still an editor, I'd be even more unhappy. So I share your unhappiness. So um, just look at me unhappy so we can all be unhappy together and move on. Good. Right. Now that we've all been unhappy together, let's move on. What we, what we will do is to provide you with improved facilities to getting all of the content. So we will have uh, two monitors in here. There's a press box over there that everyone could plug in. All the cameramen could plug in their cables or their recorders. Anyone who's on an XLR, XLR female call in. And we could support at least 14 devices on that press box so you could get all of the audio directly from the room. And we are going to provide, I think, some, the SDI is here already, so that you could get all of the video, you get it real time, so you can leave here with it. There'll be no delay. And also, we are going to use a couple of pool photographers in the room and you can get all of that content immediately as well. There just is not, it just isn't possible. Until we find a bigger venue, it's really difficult to do that on the opening day. And I really am sorry that that's the case, but um, we'll provide you with all of the support. We're also going to work double time this year to ensure that you get the interviews that you want. I know that last year, Everyone didn't get all of the interviews they want. We're going to try. Um, we're going to put a lot more effort into ensuring that if you want to interview someone who is a guest of the conference, that we press as hard as possible to ensure that you get those interviews. We're going to make this room in the backdrop available to you so you could come in here, set up, do your interviews, whatever you need. We're going to try to get it to you. And a little extra, just because we, we physically can't get you in the room. And I just want to get that out there from now, so that we don't have to um, um, disagree about it tomorrow morning. If you have any questions about this little piece, I want to take those now. Because once I'm done with this, I want to get into the um, conference issues proper. And I didn't want to um, trample on Kurt's time with um, the logistics question. So if there are any concerns. Uh, that's why we're detailed for the planning. To ensure that you're in the room. Rather than treating as a set of classes. OK. Um, well, I think you should know that I don't think any um, person in the media is a second class citizen. 
Um, I, I, I like to boast I still bleed media blood. So um, that, that I just want to put that one on the table. Secondly, I don't think that the media was excluded in the planning. I think the, the fact that we're doing all the things we're doing is to ensure the media remains central to the planning. There's, uh, there's, some, there's some realities of the space in which we're operating. First of all, it's a commercial conference. I don't pretend that it isn't. And so people who register as paid delegates and people who are um, paying for their boots and their exhibition spaces and so on have a reasonable expectation of sitting in the room because they bought the seat. And it's, it's, it's a harsh reality of the limitations that the venue provides. And it's, it's the best one we have for this kind of activity. So we couldn't go down the street to the other one because they have another 200 seats that we could sit everyone from the media. It just isn't possible. So it's not, it's not, it's not second classism. And, and, be, and, to, and because it isn't is the reason why we are bending over backwards to serve you better in throughout the conference. Because we, are, we, are, we just have these limitations. Um, I'll tell you this, and, and I know if Kurt wants me to say this, I might lose my job, but I'll tell you this. One of the things we marketed, and I know this is going to get reported badly by somebody, I'll brace myself. One of the things we guaranteed some of our commercial exhibitors is that if you buy this booth, this is the package you get. Yada, 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 yada. Including in the package is a free delegate pass, a complimentary delegate pass. If you buy a booth downstairs, you get a complimentary delegate pass. Kurt here had to put on his game face and tell all of those guys that if you didn't register a paid delegate, we can't let your complimentary delegate come into the room. So there are people who are spending thousands of dollars, thousands of US dollars downstairs on their boots, and their complimentary delegate cannot come in the room because there is no place to put them. It's the harsh reality. So even though I said, that we must remember that there are commercial issues around the conference. Even people who have spent money, in some instances, can't get in the room because there's no place to put them. It's just a harsh reality. The conference is very well subscribed. Kurt is going to share those numbers. And, and not being able to get this media pool in the room is partly a function of our success. The success is, is, has, comes at a price. And, and the success of what we're doing has made it very difficult. Should it be this way? It shouldn't be. Should we try to find a fix? Yes. How? I don't know. And we spend a lot of time trying to figure this out. OK, could you tell us, in addition to the opening ceremony, what we would not be uh, allowed to enter into that room for? I, I, think, I think it's the opening ceremony. Alone? As far as I know, yes. I couldn't say. I lacked Colvin just now. No, I just looking at. Hold on, hold on. I'm just looking at the number of persons in this room. If I look at the number of persons in this room, and and then cameras and devices, it's a problem for us, not a problem for you. I, I, if if I were a reporter today, I'd be jumping all up and down the place, dancing on my head in a grass skirt until somebody let me in. But it's a problem. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Real. Mr. Real, Alex, I'm here. Yeah, I saw you, but you know, Bashka was shouting Go ahead, Dennis. How much do you estimate you lose by a public A lot. What's a lot? I don't know. I don't have a number. I don't have a number. Mr. Chairman, yes. Dr. Rowley attending this conference? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold a second. Hold a second. Um, we, haven't, I, I, we haven't gone to the content of the conference yet. I really want to deal with the matter of media accommodation because it's a matter that I am personally uncomfortable with, but one that I haven't been able to find a solution to for two years. So let's deal with that, and then court will, we'll have a nice press conference with court and all that content just now. Okay. But, but I just want to deal with this. It's a troubling matter, and I, and I, and I really 
the, that's the reason I, I didn't put it at the end, right? I wanted to deal with it at the beginning because I know it's a troubling matter. We did this last year. I, I, don't, I think everyone tried last year to make the best of it. And I, I think um, we ensured that people got good access last year. One of your colleagues in this room, I, I, I don't want to say who the person is, purely because you know, some people take initiative and I don't want to start anything. But one of your colleagues in this room has already this morning interviewed one of the high-ranking officials who's here to speak at the conference. We facilitated that when the request came through in part because we know we have a challenge. So, you know, we do everything we can to help you with this, right? We are doing everything we can. Others of you could show the same kind of initiative if there's somebody that you want to talk to today that's here already, I'm going to walk down the corridor myself up and down until I get you the interview or the opportunity. But we're doing all of that to compensate for this problem that we have no solution to us yet. All right, could we move on now then? Because I, I mean, we, we could interrogate it some more, but I, 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 I'm your friend and I can promise you that interrogating it further is most likely not to make it change in the structure that we're dealing with right now. Let me ask this. Is pay to play one of the main drivers of excluding I thought I was very clear on what's driving it. Um, um, because what I'm saying, in any situation, in any situation where there's pay to play, pay to play, the media is never excluded. And I, and I, and I, and I, no, I listen. No, I, no, no, I heard what you said. As far as you being a member of the fraternity, it was very unsettling to you. And, you know, but I guess the powers that be. So no, it's not about the powers that be. It's not, it's, it's not a power question. It's not a power question. When it comes to this matter, it's not one set of powers overriding other powers. I can assure you of that. This is not a power question. This is a capability and facilities question. If we, were, if, we were, if we were on Air Force One, we'd have to depend on the pool photographer. Even if we were CBS, NBC, whatever, we'd have to depend on the pool photographer. This is not the only place on the planet where for some events, we have to depend on the pool. To me, if we had the problem and didn't provide you with the benefit of the pool, you're going to have Every piece, every second of video that gets shot in that room, you'll have. Every word that gets spoken in that room, you'll have. Both of those, real time. You'll be right here. The only thing is different is that you're not sitting in a seat there watching. You're sitting in a seat there watching. But nothing else will happen for you in the room, except for, and I'm not discrediting this, except for some atmosphere. It's easier to, refer f to, re to report on an atmosphere if you're in the atmosphere, I know this, but, but, um, but this is not the only place where we have to depend on a pool. And, on, and, and unfortunately, at this time, we have to depend on the pool again for that first event. But you have all of the conference before you. You have all of the speakers before you. You have everything that you need to report, except a seat for those two hours in a particular part of the building. That's all it is. It's, there's, no, there's no pay to play, there's no power play, there's none of that. None of that at all. It's the reason why, for example, I insisted that we find a way to even improve the technology and the services we're providing in the media center all because of that, those two hours. When, for the ribbon cutting, the entire media center would be taken ahead of time to primary place for the ribbon cutting and for all that happens there and for the tour of all the heads and visitors, all of that. You have access, complete unhindered access to all of that ahead of anybody. No compromises. No compromises. If you ask for an interview, the only way you wouldn't get it is if the person who you want to interview doesn't want to be interviewed. But if you want to interview, I don't know, Kurt? Kurt is a troublesome fellow. But if you want to interview Kurt, I will bring him kicking and screaming in chains so that you could interview him. 
Guaranteed. I am, that's my personal guarantee. All right? It's my personal guarantee because I understand what it means to us to get access up, and, up close and personal. Ringside view to any fight. No reporter wants there to be a fight and we don't have a ringside seat. What kind of thing is that? I understand that. I still fight for ringside seat to, and I report it every day. I just still just fast as I've always been. I try to get a ringside seat when something happening. But, you know. Mr. Graham. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so could we move on to the conference now, ladies and gentlemen? I would like to introduce. Um, thank you. I'd like, thank you for that. I'd like to introduce again um, the CEO of the International Energy Conference and Expo, Mr. Kurt Babulal. Hmm? Oh, the answer is 54. The answer to the question somebody asked about how many media houses have registered, the answer is 54. Ask the next question quick because I'm moving on. Ask it quick, 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 quick. I know the question. Ask it. You have to accommodate all of us in here. Do you think you'll be able to? But again, first. I know, I know, buddy. Oh, keep on low. I didn't think that was the question you were going to ask. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask a, a different question. Um, we're trying to accommodate everyone. And, um, you know. So, uh, is it going to be a first come first serve because if it's 54 media houses registered, how much people get the day? Well, I, depends on how many people each of them registers. But, okay, but we were moving on. I think we're done with the logistics. We're doing the best we could. And, um, you know. Um, Oh, you, you, you don't want us to move on anymore? Yeah, I want us to move on, but you know, I have an interesting question. So if I, say I come in, I'm, I'm covering a speaker in the afternoon session or something, mm. and I come, and the meeting room is filled, where, what do I do? Where, where do I do? I'll tell you what you'll do. I'll tell you what you will do. I will tell you what you will do. Here's what you will do. You will not be here, I promise you. Because last year, half the time, the media center was less than half occupied. <laughs> Last year, there were days we threw away food that was provided for the media because there weren't enough media people present to eat it. So I don't expect, after the opening ceremony, I expect the facilities here to be completely adequate. And if they're not, I will make, take steps to ensure we cater for the other people. Are you on my side now? <laughs> Uh, listen, we have a, can I accommodate one more staff? She is coming to work for me. No, no, no. The opening ceremony. The, no, if it was 34, the problem would still be there. No, I told you there are people in this room who interviewed some of those VIPs this morning already. Well, but what do you gain by that? I don't know what there is to gain if people in this room are already interviewing the VIPs today. Now, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. I don't think there's anything new we could add to that conversation. I have said, I have said, I have said that I will provide you access to everyone unless they don't want to give you the access. There's nothing else I could do. No, I'm the conduit. I don't keep the gate. That's even worse. No, I'm the conduit. Dennis Chabral wants to interview this person. I am going to ensure that I serve as a conduit to try to get you the interview. Every one of those people has their own gatekeeper. That's all in your party gates. Right? Every one of those people, like any VVIP anywhere in the world, they have gatekeepers. I'm not a gatekeeper. The man, the, man, the man who interviewed the next man this morning, I didn't even know when he arranged the interview. I mean, Tarantino, I listen to my colleagues here. I've covered all the conferences around the world, and we have not ever had this chat. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. So I had started to say that um, we're, we continue to be grateful for your presence. We continue to be grateful for the coverage you've provided. And so our CEO, Mr. Kurt Babalow, who many of you have met already, is going to provide you now with an update on where we are with preparations. <coughs> we're, he's going to cover um, general preparations, ticket information, issues of accreditation, 
there's a critical traffic advisory um, that he's going to give because we're trying to ensure that we cause less problems for our city that's already in gridlock by bringing the, the VAVIPs through here. Um, some indications as to speakers and their arrivals and stuff like that. And you know, general information on the conference. Um, Kurt should be able to field all of your questions. And if there are any questions I need to handle, I will remain. Kurt. Morning, morning, everyone. Thank you for all coming and being here. Um, so to start off, um, preparations are very much on schedule. Um, there's no challenges at this point in time, except the weather. But we're hoping that um, someone says a prayer for us, and it's all sunshine and rainbows. Um, with regards to ticketing, um, right now for the exhibition, tickets are on sale. Um, that exhibition opens on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Um, for traffic advisory, um, sorry guys, I'm going to be short and direct. I hope that's, that's okay. I'll wait on your questions to, to expound on it. For traffic advisory, what we're doing differently this year is we have um, two places for persons to park. Um, it will be at the Everest Cricket Ground and the Police Evelary uh, ground as well. We're also providing shuttle staff persons uh, move from those two locations into the event. Um, we see that as, um, <clears throat> as beneficial because we'll be providing security. No one will have to pay, park on the roads, um, so it'll result in less congestion. Speakers and arrivals. All right, so I'll just run you through quickly the agenda from starting from the Tuesday to the Friday. Um, for the opening ceremony, uh, I think all of you would have known already um, there are heads of states, and you already know the heads of states that will be present um, in that afternoon. So right after this. Can you mention the heads of states before you be there? Sorry? Can you please mention the heads of states before expecting Right, so we have, um, for the first time, uh, we have. Uh, Prime Minister Keith Rowley. Uh, yeah? That's my question. Yes. Okay. And we also have Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez. Um, Our Excellency. And we also have um, we have also have speaking the ex president of Colombia, Ivan Duque. Dr. Santuki also? There may be two others. There may be two others who will speak virtually. Yes. So for the afternoon session, we we move into um, a two panels. We'll be having that afternoon, which will be skills development and regional collaboration. Okay. Um, I think that's that's. For the remaining of the, the, the event on the 16th, 17th, um, you will have other panels such as updates, panels for ESG, um, women, women in energy panels, to name a few. Um, the agenda can be seen on the website as well. Um, on the Friday, something differently that we did this year, uh, we have a young professionals uh, forum or a, or session which runs from 9 to 12 um, and the purpose of that that session um, is to give young professionals both who are entrepreneurial minded and career minded an opportunity to have an understanding of an overview of the energy sector um, it's also will be deemed as a networking event um, and they will have an opportunity to you know walk with their proposals, their CVs, but to get great insight as to what's happening in the energy sector. So that's a little bit different what we're doing this year. Um, from announcing it from last week, Wednesday, to now, the numbers are currently at 350 registrants for that particular day. Um, overall, for us right now, we're at approximately 1,300. The Young Professionals Forum on, on Friday from 9 to 12. Um, so far, in total, we have over 1,200 participants, which this includes exhibitors, um, sponsors, 
um, speakers and our delegations. So if you, that's, that's a bit of an update from my end. That's the conference. That, that's the overall event in total. Could you break down those numbers, like how many are Sure, sure. So for exhibitors, we have approximately 200 exhibitors, uh, 30 sponsors, and just over 800 delegates. The price of the exhi exhibition tickets is five thousand dollars. Yes. Guys. So we haven't changed the price as of last year. The pr that price has remained. And the price for a regular delegate. For a regular delegate. Yes. It's four hundred US. Yes, we th thank you for asking that. You can register for that online right at our website, uh, www.gyanaenergy.gy. There's no charge for that. No charge. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, so the app basically, you, you're asking how the app works? Yeah, the app. Uh, oh, so the app is basically for convenience and those a bit more technologically savvy. Um, so everything that you can do on the website, you'll be able to do on the app. So you'll be able to see the exhibitors, the sponsors, register, um, both for the, well, would have been both for the uh, conference from Tuesday to Thursday, but now you can also register for the young professionals as well. You'll also be able to receive updates from our end as to what's happening on a daily basis or a timely basis or every hour, what's happening at the conference. Sure. So last year, I believe that was held by the GMSA. Um, when we approached them early in the year, they, they felt that more traction came to the conference, the event of the conference, than it went to the Humaniano. So what we did is we invited those, those same exhibitors who were there to come in and, and, and be part of our event. So they're here. I'm happy to say they're here this year. So it just makes it a bit more convenient for everyone. Instead of having it separate. If, if I could say that there was a overall sense of the conference that you had in terms of the numbers for delegates and sponsors and exhibitors, would you agree with that? Um, overselling? Yeah. From an information sharing in integrity perspective? No, more than you could um, No, I won't say that. Has anyone decided, has any problem? Excuse me, could I, uh, um, Dennis, I just want to, to add something to the answer. Um, the, the conference activities and the exhibition could actually cater to more people than, it act, than, than actually participate right now in terms of what the venue can physically provide. The primary limitation to numbers at the moment is how many people could attend a sit-down opening ceremony because of the size of this venue here. Um, once you get past the opening ceremony, people pick and choose which, you know, the guy from Exxon might want to be in the room for the Ghana report, but then he goes down to his booth. So we never have those same numbers in the room at any one time. It's rarely that opening morning that we suffer this pressure. So, um, so if, if we didn't have to find seats in the opening ceremony, we could sell another 200 people. They could come, they could go to the expo, they could do all the things they do in the space. It's the opening ceremony that we have to face that limitation. Um, and so I just want to add that to Kurt's answer about whether we oversold or not. We're, no, we're not oversold. We, are, we are, have room, but no room. 
Sorry, then. Sir, no, Dennis was asking a question. I interrupted. I was asking, him. sir, uh, if you have had any public persons who decided not to call. Any public persons? Prominent persons. Prominent persons. Well, well, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Who? Well, we invited over. No, who? No. <laughs> When, when, you, when you're planning the conference, you invite a lot of people. You invite 50 people to speak. But among the problem person. For, no, if, if you have a typical name, ask it. I, can, I don't want to give you a list of 500 people who said they're not coming. Yeah, what prominent, prominent, uh, prominent, uh, prominent. prominent person. So well, there are a lot of prominent people who are coming or not coming for different reasons. If you, have, if you want to ask a question about the person, are they coming or not, ask. I will answer. Name a person. Ask the question, I will answer you. Prime Minister Mia Motley. Prime Minister Mia Motley is not attending in person. Yes, she, will, she is probably going to attend virtually. Any representative from Barbados? On behalf of the government, yes, I believe. Yes. Yes. Uh, let, me explain, let me explain that quickly. Let me explain that quickly. As you know, we set the dates for this conference last year. We announced them on the last day of the conference last year. We're doing February 14 this year. Subsequent to that, the Caribbean community set the dates for the intersessional meeting of heads. That meeting starts in the Bahamas on the 15th. It has caused logistical challenges for some prime ministers and therefore ministers in the region because they have to get there by the 15th. And for some of them are getting there on the 14th for pre-conference meetings for areas of responsibility that they have. So a few regional heads of government who had intended to participate in the conference for the logistics of the heads of government meeting in Nassau will be unable now to attend here physically. That's open information. There's nothing secret about that. So why Jeffrey Sachs is not coming? Oh, that's what you meant by prominent? No, I'm asking you. Well, Jeffrey has decided to no longer attend. I was not privy to the reason why he's not attending. As far as we know, he had committed, and later on in the discussions about his participation, he said he is no longer able to attend. Um, and that's as far as I know. How will that affect the, the deliberations in the conference, you think? Well, if you have certain minds and actors in the global space on energy and environment, you certainly want them at the table. And if you don't have some of those, then you are disappointed. Um, but it's not the only opportunity. We have speakers this year we didn't have last year. We had speakers last year we didn't have this year. We will continue to drive hard at getting the um, the best minds on these subjects available to us as the, as the conference proceeds. Um, sorry? I'm sure he did. I said I wasn't privy to it. Right. Okay, you're sure, but you Yes, I'm certain that he did. That's the way these things work. Um, <clears throat> someone of Mr. Sachs's stature will not commit and then uncommit and not give a reason why he is not coming. I'm just not privy to it because it's, I, I, I am not involved in speaker management. Someone else is. And how long would it be for that? I don't know. Do you think the environment will lobby, lobby side to I have no idea. Mr. Graham. Hold on, let me finish. Yeah, I have no idea. How strong do you think that, that lobbying is as far as the energy sector is concerned? I would not be able to judge that. It's outside of my expertise. Sir, sorry. Yes. I was going to ask, by what benchmark do you think the planning committee has been able to improve on the hosting of the energy conference this year when you compare it to last year? Well, the, the energy conference has, I like to say, three critical aspects to its nature. It's not limited to those three, but there are three that are critical. One is, is commercial performance, how you have to sustain this. This is not a state event. This is a private sector run event. So it has to be profitable to be able to sustain it. That's a fact of the nature of the conference. 
So if we are able to attract more exhibitors and more participants, then the, the revenue streams for the conference are secure, and that's a one benchmark. If we don't succeed there, we couldn't do it. Secondly, the issue of content. You want to be able to have content in your conference that people want to come to hear and to participate in those discussions and conversations. And in as far as we have been able to continue to attract both speakers and persons who want to hear them and have discussions with them, I think that's a second benchmark of success. The third benchmark that's critical is organization. Are we able to keep making the organization improvements that help to drive the conference because people could, could participate, people could exhibit, people could do all these things? Um, on that one, I think that's the third benchmark that I could say we've succeeded. We're going to, um, we're rolling out, for example, a number of new technologies to help with, with access, to help with movement, to help with security and just overall efficiency. So I think if we took those three, and I, like I said, those are not the only three, but in the way I've always viewed this, those are my top three. If you, took, if you take those three metrics, I believe we, have, we are doing better than we did last year. Are we at optimum performance in any of these areas? I doubt it. I believe we still have um, space to keep improving how we are doing this, and we have, we have people who are dedicated to working at this all the time. Alex, Alex, um, and, and maybe for the CEO, was, was a benchmark established when it came to the fee to attend, for example, the Expo? Because I think it's at $5,000. Yes. Right? But you may have small businesses or entrepreneurs who may have an interest. Yes. But at $5,000 and over four days, do you expect the participants to fill the exhibition spaces for the four days when maybe you could have looked at reducing the price so that generally persons who may not be able to afford the five thousand dollars but be interested in coming and seeing and learning about all this energy development that takes place in Guyana. They could have come at a smaller fee, especially for the last two days or so. Was something like that taken into consideration? Well, I think that's for court, but, but yeah, let me just but let me but let me just say this. Let me just say this. Um, once you have to charge for a service, you have debates about what the price should be and could be. As far as I know, we didn't move the price. No, the don't. price this year it remains the price that was there last year. So if I were to hazard a guess, I would say that given that people participated at that price last year. My expectation is that they will participate at that price this year. Um, the, the price for the exhibition is driven by a number of factors. The first of those is what it costs to put on the exhibition, what it costs to use these spaces. I keep reminding that, that the spaces that we're using for this conference are privately held and operated spaces that we pay for. We pay for the spaces, we pay for the infrastructure that's in those spaces. We pay for, we pay for all the power that's used in the exhibition. But the exhibitors pay. The exhibitors pay. So the, your, your, revenue, too, by the your, your revenue stream, your revenue stream to cover your exhibition costs are two. Your, your exhibitor revenue and your attendee revenue. Those two have to get you to a place where the costs are covered. And, um, I'm not, I, I don't mean, let me make that comment. But um, essentially, we, what one thing we did, we didn't set a benchmark, but one thing we did was to try for, for to do everything possible to ensure that the cost to a visitor did not go up. But and to add to Alex on that note, is the value for the client coming in has increased. So if you look at it from a financial perspective, the value, the costs remain the same, but the value they receive increased. So in, in kind of a way, they've gotten more. So to answer your question, um, last year we had about 130 boots. This year we have close to 200. Um, our sponsorships have increased. We've, we're seeing exhibitors going into sponsorship. And as a key indicator that um, 
they see value in doing business. They see value in presenting themselves here at this event. Um, so the not just setting the benchmarks, but the, the actuality and re reality of it is there. Um, that 130 moving to 200 is, is is a very close balance between 50 international, 50% 50 international, 50% local, um, and we have majority of our clients coming back again, but the the variance this year is made up of um, traditional and even new uh, co companies coming into the energy sector. How are you able to measure the success of the last conference, and what were some of the high points? Um, Dennis, you know, <laughs> At the end of the conference last year, we had a we held a press conference here where we addressed all of those but, comprehensively. But now, now, when you get to this one, what are some of the high points from then to now that you were able to like concretize? Well, I think it was in concrete then. Um, I would say you know the things we said last time remain the same. And what are those as as a recap briefly? I'll ask Colin to get me a recording this now. And can you say, sir, uh, when you said that the, that the conference is being is private sector led, can you say who is really planning this conference? Okay. Who's organizing it? All right. Who in terms of persons? Okay. Or 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 oh, entities. All right. But let me let me repeat all the information that we made available already. There is a company called the International Energy Conference and Expo Guyana Incorporated which we stated last time. There's a, there's a body corporate that was established in Guyana to run this conference and hopefully in the future other kinds of conferences, events, and meetings. That's clear. It has is, it is also been clearly established that the chairman of the body corporate is Mr. Anthony White. The chief executive officer is Kurt Babulov. The only personal change in the C-suite, as we call it these days, is that Kurt replaced our previous CEO. Kurt was um, operations manager last year and moved into the role of chief executive officer this year. We had a press release about that. That's the organization, and those are the primary people who run it. Are you getting financial value from the state? No. Let me, let, me, let me say this again. This, this is the same questions we answered last year. And let me give the same answer I gave last year. There are some guests who are coming to the conference who are either heads of government or heads of state. Those particular visitors naturally receive certain services and protections from the state as happens when the head of state visits another country. In that regard, the government is providing those services. So for example, if you see Prime Minister Rauli come, he's not going to hitch a ride with me to come over to the conference. The government is going to provide a vehicle, and the police are going to secure him. If Mr. Ali goes to Trinidad, the same thing is going to happen. So I was clear the last time. In as far as you have guests who are heads of state and or government, the government provides the support that the government provides normally to a head of state or head of government visiting the country. The government is investing no financial resources in the conference. The conference, as a body corporate, has to generate its own revenues to keep the business running. Court is the CEO, and if he doesn't do that, I'll apply for his job. Correct. Ah, but he does that. He's a good man. And um, apart from all of you, you mentioned, you're really trying to understand, right, apart from financial support, are you getting any other support from government? Let me, let, me, let me try this one more time. The government... I'm talking about the logistics of VIPs. Any other support for the conference? Yes. The answer is yes. And what is that? Well, there are government agencies that... We asked to fix some potholes in the street so the guests wouldn't fall into them. That's a government expense, was government role. I mean, we, we can't run away from these things. You come down the street, you see. Agenda. 
You run down the street, you're going to see flags on flagpoles. We didn't put them up. Foreign dignitaries are coming to the country. The government did that. So in terms of, uh, those are obvious things that the government do. Uh, you have, you have, let, let me ask you. But, but the, government, the government is writing no check to this event for its hosting or its conduct. No check. Are you writing no checks? If we are writing this. Ta taxes. And hold on, hold on. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Well, court was about to say taxes, which is one. The company has to pay taxes. But any services? Well, NCN trying to charge me for some services. In this room, I can't discuss business with NCN in front of their face. But, but, but um, NCN is trying to charge me for some services and trying to negotiate. Last year, the Department of Public Information played a very major role in recording the disability information to the media. Was that a paid service? Last year? No. Last conference. No, if President Ali is going to speak, the DPI will the force the way and cover it. Sorry? The no, we, we have our own press unit. We don't ask them to issue our press releases. That's their choice if they want to issue a press release on Sunday. Recordings? I said we were using a pool. And last year, we used some of, the, some of their services to provide the pool resources. So that was a paid service? I think we paid, yes, we, I think it was a paid service. I can't remember last year, but I think so. I, I'll have to double check that to make sure I'm telling the truth on that point. How comfortable is the conference? Boy, you know, I really wondering that question myself. Huh? It's a privately held company. He doesn't have to answer that. It's like, go ask Digicel what's their profits. I used to be their consultant. And we never answered that question for 15 years. It's a privately held company. Um, so he doesn't have to answer that. But what we can say is that the, for the second year running, we believe that the company is able to meet its costs and make a profit. What about in terms of contributions that it makes to in other services, other services that benefit from the conference? Do you ever assess how much you input back into the conference? Well, let me tell. Let me. I, I sure Kurt has an answer. I'll let him give his answer. But let me say this: We are not yet set up to effectively run the analytics on all of the impact of the conference. And that's something we need to do as time goes by. But I could tell you this. We, we started a podcast called Energy Perspectives. And one of our guests so far on Energy Perspectives was Dr. Peter Ramsarup of Go Invest. He said that about 20% of, and you could check this because I'm, I'm, I'm going off my head here, so don't quote me exactly. Go listen and double check the number with him. But he seemed to suggest on the podcast that about 20% of the return visitors over the last calendar year to Guyana to follow up on business opportunities were return visitors that made their first appearance in Guyana at, this, at the conference where we held it last year. So he has a metric. I don't understand his metric. I didn't delve into that, but he, he put that on the table. I think you should check with, with him and go invest about what they're able to measure. I don't believe that it's a completely bulletproof measure just yet because I don't, we don't have these metrics running very well in Guyana. We certainly are, are going to be working on developing those kinds of bulletproof metrics as we go. It's one of Kurt's responsibilities. Because understanding those things is what's going to help him grow the business. You might want to add to what I said. Uh, Alex, I think you covered it okay. very much. As a company, would it be a fair statement for me to say that you provide you have a combination of in-house and out-of-house services? Oh, oh, yes, obviously. Uh, could you give me a percentage? No. 
we'd have to check. I don't think we, I don't think that's something we're running around with. We we we're here busy trying to just make the conference work right now. And if we need something or we can't get it, we get on the phone, we yell and call somebody. Could you bring over an an, an extra port a party for the back? Send us a bill. I don't think we have. Um, I'm I'm certain we could do the an, the analysis on last year's numbers because that's done. But um, I don't it's, I don't know it's a question that that we have focused a lot of attention on right now. But but you know accountants and auditors could figure that out in the fullness of time. Could you speak to the tendency of some of the industry's <coughs> analyst firms out in Rice to energy is coming? I don't know. You do, do you know? Rice that yeah. um, I'm unsure. From a media house no. perspective? They're they're an analytics firm. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't I don't know. We could check. We could yeah. check. I mean all the information available digitally, we can check. If it matters enough to you, we can check. Okay. The business analytics for that are known. I don't, I, I couldn't say off the top, like I said, we could find that out. It's just a query on, on a database, but we don't have that information with us now. I, I, I may mean, have missed it. But Sorry, what's your name, sir? Jarrell Wright, um, Evening News. Jarrell? Yeah, Evening News. Okay. I, I know it's time for me to retire when more than 50% of the people in the room at a press conference in Vienna are unknown to me personally, at least who they are. It's time for me to quit. Hi, go ahead with your question. Um, I, I may have missed it, but is um, Santo coming? Oh, you mean His Excellency, President yes, Santoki of Suriname. President Santoki is a speaker of the conference because of of his travel arrangements with attending the heads meeting in the Bahamas and meetings that both he and his foreign minister have before that, he may not be able to make it in person any longer. We are going to, they're working on the schedule and we should have confirmation about that later today. But for all of the heads who had committed and who now have to juggle with travel and meetings to, to the Bahamas, we are expecting to see some changes and variations. Um, at one time, you know, the first thing that happened is because of the heads of meeting, like I said earlier, got scheduled. Then they knew they couldn't attend the whole conference like some of them did last year. Then it came down to, well, how could they participate here and participate there? But you know, in the region, the, the raw cost of air travel. Most of our regional heads of government don't don't jet around in private jets among these small islands. It's a it's a it's a difficult logistical challenge to be a head of government in the in Georgetown on the 14th and Nassau on the 15th. That's a pretty tough challenge. So Dr. Rowley may also attend virtually. Like, I don't think so. I think he's in person. Um, He's, he's confirmed to be in person. Yeah. Okay. Kurt said he's confirmed to be in person. Great. Will the public have on any day access to the expo? Every day. Every yeah. Day. Yeah. Okay. Starting yeah. from, from yeah. 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Okay. Last year you guys did a free day. Will we possibly see anything like that again? Um, we, we'll announce that closer. But now that we have that stretch into the If break. we so decide, we will announce it closer, for all the obvious reasons. Okay, thank you very much. Um, grateful uh, engagement, press guys. Passes, sir. Yeah. Sorry? Press passes, when are they available uh, outside yeah. the door? Hold on. The press passes, if I'm going to escape to the safety of the washroom, and you all, I leave Colvin for you all to deal with him. If thank you, everyone. Give you your press yep. passes, take him on back and <laughs> All right, good. Thanks, guys, 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 thank you very much for coming. Um, remember, we really appreciate this. Um, I'm serious about my commitment to bend over backwards to try to get you on the given the obvious presentation that we can. All right, good, everybody. So press passes are not available as yet, and as soon as they become available, I will send an email out for persons who.